Well, to go along with last week's paint roller, this week I'm showing you how to make some cans of paint, one open, one closed, and a drop cloth so we don't make a mess in the dollhouse when we're doing that, that renovation. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy these projects are. Alright, for our painter's drop cloth, we're going to start with just a piece of unbleached muslin. This is a real inexpensive fabric. Um, it's not very heavy. And I cut this one 9 inches by 12 inches because that's pretty, usually a painter's drop cloth, a lot of them are 9 feet by 12 foot. So I just cut a square in the rectangle. And we're going to seal the edges with any clear nail polish because this stuff wants to unravel really, really bad. And I don't want to have to uh, sit here and sew it or put a hem in it. Now you could run a bead of like a really thin glue, but it's quick to just run the nail polish. You see what it does when it ravels, it just does that. So I'm just going to paint this around. I've got it sitting on a piece of parchment paper from the kitchen. Um, I love having parchment paper for my craft room. It's really, really useful. Uh, another crafter that I watch a lot that does just general crafting was using uh, parchment paper and I thought oh that looks really handy so I picked up some and I am so glad I did I go through a lot of it all right so I am going to in that length of time I got that short end done I am going to turn the camera off I'm going to do the other three edges I am going to kind of trim this where it got frayed uh, when this is all dry, which should take just a few minutes. That's the advantage of nail polish. It doesn't take long. I'll be back and we'll do the fun part. All right, the nail polish is dry. I'm going to lift this up just to make sure it's not stuck down. But now the edges won't fray out anymore. We're going to have fun now. We're going to make a mess. I've gathered up some bottles of acrylic paint. Any colors you want. Uh, if you there's no light on that side of my picture, it looks like. If you're going to have a specific color scheme in your dollhouse, you might want to use those colors. I just grab just a variety of colors. I apparently grabbed an empty bottle of paint. Okay. Get some gray on there. Get some yellow. Just put out just a little bit, just a blob of each one, because you'll need some room to work. And you are going to make a mess, so don't be worrying. You're like, oh, this is why I hate folk art paint. It separates really badly for me. Okay, there we go. Don't wear good clothes to do this. Don't have anything important around you that you don't want to get paint on, I'm going to attempt to not get paint on my camera. I have a variety of, of paint brushes. I have a clay cutter that's about a half inch in diameter. I have a container of water. I have a palette knife. I have a toothbrush that's used for crafting and I have a knitting needle. We are going to start by, let's see, I'm just going to grab a paintbrush, get lots of water, and we're going to get lots of water in this and we are going to splatter. I can hear paint hitting all over. There's paint all over my table. I'm going to do that. We're going to grab some another paintbrush, more water. You want quite a bit of water in each one of these colors. I 
And be sure and read the blog post about a story I have about a set of these that I sold one time that um, the lady that bought it sent me a photo. I wish I still had the photo that she sent me because she sent me a really cool photo that she set up out of some things I did for her. I, I did a few extra things for her for her, um, her dollhouse. And you notice I'm using a variety of sizes of paintbrushes too because it, they make different size splatters. This one makes nice big ones. Now one more color and then we'll start playing with our, uh, our clay cutter. I need more water in that. All right, now take your clay cutter, get it nice and wet. You know, because you set your paint can down on the uh, drop cloth sometimes and you spill, and this is just supposed to represent a drop cloth that's been used a lot. And we can get the toothbrush, get the toothbrush nice and wet. Let's see, let's use this one. And just splatter. Yeah, there's paint going all over. <laughs> there is paint going all over my room. But you can continue, you can put as much or as little paint on here as you want. You can get, get some water on your palette knife, and then you'll get some bigger drips. Get more of that green. And it's up to you how much you want to get on there. I'm going to let this dry and then we can see how this all looks together. All right, we're going to make a paint can. And this is something I used to make a whole bunch of, but I don't remember exactly how I did it back then and I don't have any. So I kind of reinvented the wheel. And I actually went and measured a paint can that we had sitting in the hallway that we'd that we need to put away. Um, paint can, the paint can in my hallway is six inches in diameter and about nine inches tall. Eight or nine inches. So I went looking for something that was about a half inch in diameter and I found this Crayola marking pen. It's actually one that's dried up. I cut a strip of cardstock that's just under three-fourths of an inch, probably about five-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to roll it around this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it around and see where I want two layers of paper. I don't want it to go around a third time or a partial time. So I cut this off even with that. This does two things. It gets me the right length. It also kind of pre-bends this. Now, we have to think logically on our glue. We're going to put our glue so that it doesn't attach to the marker. So I'm going to put it on the outside on one end, and I'm going to put it on the inside on this end. Let's sit for a second. I am using Tombow Multi Glue, Tombow Mon Mono Multi Glue. I love this for putting paper together. The only thing is it remains sticky, but we're going to paint over it so it'll be okay. It sticks really fast so when we're doing this. And I'm going to warn you in advance, I feel like I'm going to sneeze or cough pretty soon. I'm hoping to get through the video without doing either. So glue side out down here. This way we glue our end. And keep it kind of moving so that it doesn't stick to your pen. Wipe off any extra glue and take it off. Now make sure that everything is tight and even. Make sure you don't have any ends sticking out. We need three of these. And I have a half inch circle here. We need three of these out of the same cardstock. 
we're going to take our, our paint can, one end or the other, it doesn't matter which, this is not very round, so I'm going to round it up. It's wanting to not be round. There. That's better. Now, get my glue started. I'm going to put glue around this edge. And I'm going to stick it right on top of one of those circles. And I hope it won't stick out too far. We're going to set that back down. Now while our glue is... Gonna stick it, see what I mean about being sticky? It's, my fingers are sticky, so try to pick that up. While I still have the glue out, I'm going to glue two of the other two of these together. Kind of slide them around to get a nice thin coat of glue. That'll make our paint can lid and it will be a little more secure, a little more sturdy. We are not going to be able to put the lid on the paint can. It's going to display next to it. Put our lid on this and now we actually need some tacky glue. So we are going to fill the bottom of this with a nice thick tacky glue. Depending on how much paint you want in your can. But don't put in more than about a quarter inch. And now that just needs to set and dry. And we're just going to leave it until it's dry. Alright, so these have dried. I actually made two yesterday. I made one earlier than I made the one on camera. So now the first thing we're going to do the glue is not set in the bottom, but that's okay. We're going to paint over it. It will still dry. <clears throat> and we don't need it to go clear because we're going to paint over it. Our first thing we're going to do is paint this with a pale gray. This is called Rain Gray from Ceramicote. What brand you use is up to you on the gray. If you've watched my videos for very long, you know I really prefer Ceramicote. But I find if I put a color under the metallic that we're going to follow this with, it just coats better. As long as you don't stick your finger in too far, you can put it over your finger. Just don't stick your finger in really hard and pierce your fingernail into that glue that's not quite set up. And this one I obviously had just a little bit looser around my pen when I made it and it, the half inch circle fits a little bit better. What do I have I can hold that with? So I'm going to let this paint dry, then I'm going to flip all these pieces over, paint the other side with the gray, and then I'll be back and we'll put the silver paint on. Alright, now we're going to try and make these cans made of paper look like metal. So I'm using, as usual, Ceramicoats Metallic Silver. It is my favorite metallic paint. Oops, it's still very wet inside. Um, and it's just a matter. See, by putting it over the gray, it really does, it helps a lot. I'm not even going to do the bottom right now in the interest of getting this done quickly. Paint some silver up over this. Now if you want to, you could put a metal uh, handle on your can, a wire type handle. I'm not going to. this done and then I'm going to turn the camera off and do 
the remainder of this off camera. But that's all there is to it. And then when this is done, we are going to put some paint in our can. All right, I came back and I painted the bottoms of the cans. Um, I'm going to show you an, two different ways to finish these. And like I said earlier, you can add a wire handle if you want to. I'm running out of time today, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But uh, if you're interested, we can maybe do that another time. So first can I'm going to make, I'm actually going to make a closed one. And for this, make sure my glue is working. Come on. And I'm going to glue one of the lids right on this one. This is the one that came out just a little bit smaller than it probably should have. So that needs to sit and dry. Let's see if I can get that centered. That's better. Now this one is going to have paint in it. And to do that, I've just picked out a, pe a container of paint. And I'm just going to squirt some down in here and let it dry. And I should, yeah, I do have a brush. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. I'm going to use a brush, make sure it's coating that, and also make sure it comes up the sides. I'm also going to put some on the bottom of the lid. I'm going to go wash my brush. I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to put some labels on our cans. All right, this isn't completely dry, but it's dry enough that I can work with it. So what I did, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to be brave and work with it. Oh, I've got I have some more parchment paper here. Um, on my computer, I just made some labels for the paint cans. And I kind of talk you through what I did. I made a, a box that was a half inch tall by, I forget what the dimension was lengthwise. And about an inch and a half, two inch. Oh, I didn't even. Um, not quite three inches. So they're plenty long enough to go around my can, way more than I need. And then I like to gr to make the, the gradient color on it. Then I made a circle that I filled with white, and then I just wrote the word paint on top of it. I always make double what I need when I'm doing this because I know me, I know I'm liable to you know, mess up. Then I just cut them out. I make them extra long so that I can put them on and trim them to size. So I'm going to put some glue on the back. I'm going to put one on this can. Now this can can be left the way it is, or you could slop some of that purple paint down over it. It's up to you. You know, you, if you're doing a hardware store or something like that, you might want to have your cans nice and clean. If you've got them in a garage, you might want to have the paint running down the side of it. It's up to you. Let's see if I can get a label on this one too. And I need a wet wipe because my fingers are all sticky now. This glue is very sticky. If you want to, you could go on to like a paint store ad or on the internet and copy a label. As long as you're not selling your can, your paint cans, you could do that to get a label that looks more like your favorite brand. And like I said earlier, you obviously you can put a um, a wire handle on these. Now let's do. Let's add a little paint. Let's make this look a little messier, like it's been used. I'm gonna get, oops, put my lid on my glue before I get glue all over the table. Get another paintbrush. Pull some of this paint up so it looks like it's been poured out. 
and there we go. Your dolls have been a little messy. That's all there is to making these pink hands. Be sure and check the blog post. I'm going to try to remember to write a little bit for you about us, some ways to use these in your scenes. They're a lot of fun to use. They go really well with the paint roller we made last week. And also in the blog post, I'll give you some ideas for doing a... Oh, I almost forgot our, paint, our drop cloth. We don't want to forget that. There. Okay, I'll be retrieving that from the floor later. So there we go. I'll be... Uh, but I'll give you some ideas for how to display all of this in the blog post and some alternatives for making a paint tray. I hope you enjoyed this project. Like I said, be sure to check the blog post. Be sure and find us on Facebook. It's lots of fun to share what you're making over there. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see what I make next time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.